Hello everyone, Fuzzfinger here and welcome back to Final Fantasy 13 2. Now today we finally get to do some proper fun stuff. Uh, I'm sure you're all sick of those poxy herba puzzles, I know I certainly am. So I thought we'd do some bosses today, collect some optional fragments, but before we do anything we need to spend our crystal gem points that we've amassed up to this point. So you'll need about uh, 25,000 points and this is how I'm going to spend them for Sarah. We're going to put 9 points into the Ravager roll, levelling it to 87. And then we're going to put 21 points in the Medic roll, taking that all the way up to level 51. We're going to be actually coming back uh, to do a couple more expansions this video. Since we've got a few bosses to do and the fragments we collect for them give us a lot of CP. So we'll definitely be spending a lot of Crystal Gem points today. Without any farming as well, which is always a bonus. And now we're going to unlock the Synergist roll for Sarah. And then move on to Noel. <laughs> okay, so with Noel we're going to level up his Saboteur roll to just to level 15, so 14 points. And once we've done that, we're going to put 4 points into his Synergist roll. We want to level that to level 69. And finally we want to level his medic roll to 47. So that's going to need another 12 points. And that will be enough to get his expansion. And I think we're going to finally invest in that extra ATB segment for Noel. It's not actually urgent to go for that fifth segment for now because he's a commando, but it's probably a little bit better than uh, the two boosts that we can take at this point. So like I said, we're going for some optional fragments today, and we're going to go and hit some of the bosses which we couldn't kill earlier. Now for the first one, we need to head to Yashas Massif 01X. We picked a quest up for this place when we first visited to kill a CF which we had no chance of killing at the time but now we have every chance. If you don't have the quest for this fragment you can collect it from the uh, main village up, up the north in this area from an NPC that's just south of the ramp uh, that you go up to see Hope and Elisa. Anyway once you've got the quest you probably already got it if you've been following this walkthrough then you want to head down to the southernmost western part of the map you can see where those two treasure chests were and just run around and eventually you'll encounter the CF as a random encounter. Now once you've killed it you don't need to return to the quest giver, you collect the fragment straight away. Make sure you've got your bunker beast or your other appropriate sentinel, whatever that might be. And that's not what we're looking for. There it is. Gorgira. Now it is possible to kill this enemy at a slightly lower level than we're at. Although it does require a lot more strategy. Right about now it is just a case of trying to build his chain bonus up as much as possible and then killing him quickly before his stagger finishes. So with that said we obviously need to stagger him as quickly as we can. So get the Cloud Burst Feral Link out and get us buffed. He does like to debuff us as well, quite a lot unfortunately. And start building up his bonus as quickly as you can. Also make sure you cast Deprect, uh, Deprotect on him as soon as possible, just so he can take that little bit of extra damage. I'm actually using a Saboteur and two Ravagers at the minute to build up his bonus. And then you can switch to... Uh, Relentless Assault or Aggression before you actually stagger him so that you can stabilise his chain bonus with the commandos. Gonna pop into this paradigm just to get a few more buffs. But while keeping my Ravagers out as well to keep boosting up his bonus. A little bit into the fight he does cast Doom. I think it's when he's uh, at a certain percentage health. So you have to kill him quickly then. Doom basically puts a countdown above the character's heads and when it reaches zero they die, it's a wipe. Once he's been staggered make sure you use Sarah's ultimate arrow. 
that really boosts up his chain bonus and once he's at a max chain bonus you want to get your commandos out and go in for the kill so there's Doom it should give us plenty of time as you can see I'm leaving it fairly close I've still got my, I still had my averages out I should have had uh, commandos out once his bonus had reached max level but uh, yeah as long as you can kill him before the first stagger there won't be any problems at all and that's it there we have that fragment and a small CP reward as well it's also the final fragment to collect in this area so now we can return to the Historia Crux and start doing some more optional bosses so we've got two more bosses I want us to kill for their fragments and they are both going to be located on the Archolite Step there's actually four more fragments we can collect in the area uh, each one of those is acquired by killing a boss but realistically there's probably only the first two of those we can kill right now the other two are much harder so when you're at the Archolite Step we need to go and collect the quests uh, we can only actually collect one at a time so we'll have to do that also, you will need to have killed the Gigantors, the three Gigantors that we killed here earlier on our last visit. Remember, those are the three big cactuses that we killed by activating the gates, uh, the red, sorry, the green gates. So you do need to have killed those before we can do these quests. Now, we can collect the Ochu Fragment and the Fragment of Invincibility. I think it's random what quest you can pick up first, either the Ochu or the Invincibility one. Now, we I, I get to do the Invincibility one first, so if you have to do Ochu, then you can just skip ahead to the part of the video where we do that. It is isn't obviously in this video, so you can just skip ahead and come back then. Anyway, How are the, chocobos working out? the quest giver is uh, just at these steps that we came down. You can see the speech bubble. And the Ochu Fragment quest is up the next set of steps by the NPC that has uh, the weather control device. I wonder if it has anything to do with all the strange things going on around here. I wish it would go away on its own, but that doesn't seem likely. Will you help us? So we'll accept that mission. And for this, we need to kill the immortal. Really? Oh, that's fantastic! I'll be here waiting for good news. Now, before the enemy actually appears, we have to change the weather to cloudy if it isn't already. So remember, for cloudy, we need to have uh, both handles on the weather device facing upwards rather than down. And I'm also going to have to set up a certain Paradigm deck uh, once this weather device is sorted. Since there is a little bit of tactics involved in this fight. Now hopefully you manage to get the Orion, or Orion, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, Monster Crystal from uh, Augusta Tower earlier on. Not, you may want to go and collect it. It actually makes this fight a heck of a lot easier. I don't. I didn't get one. And I actually couldn't be bothered to go and farm for it. So I'm not going to have it. Which means my tactics will be a little bit different than if you do. Basically, the Orion, I was just looking to see if I had it and I don't, is a commando that has that is immune to lightning damage. Now all of this damage that this boss dishes out is a lightning damage so if you have the Orion you actually don't even need a sentinel and you can just use the Orion commando and do a lot more damage whereas I have to use a sentinel so it is up to you whether you think it's worth getting one but like I say you might already have it and if you do it is cheap to level just get it to level 20 I think that's the maximum level either way you definitely want to Thex Steron which is a synergist at level 20 and of course you want your Ravager Cloudburst so 
So for the default paradigm, I'm going to have two synergists, the Dexter and Noel, and we're going to have Sarah as a saboteur. That means at the start of the fight, we can get some debuffs going, and with two synergists, we can buff the party really quickly. And Smart Bomb is very useful on bosses as well, since it casts the debuffs, while also having two Ravagers to boost up the chain bonus. And Tortoise, since the boss has a very damaging lightning attack. So that will be three Sentinels, although if you have the Orion, or the Orion, whatever that monster's called, then you can just have Sarah and Noel set up as Tortoise, as, as Sentinels, and then your Commando, which is immune to lightning damage, can carry on uh, stabilising the chain bonus without worrying about dying. And when the weather's cloudy, you can see the waypoint marker. That's where you need to head to. I'm just going to skip these battles. I just want to go and get the boss done now, to be honest. So we can just see the immortal in the distance. Fortunately, despite what his name suggests, he isn't immortal. He's about to feel some ponage, in fact. Now, these bosses aren't exactly easy, especially since, if you've been following my video walkthrough, we've pretty much been overpowering our characters, and so most of the content we've experienced has been a lot easier than it should have been. So this can be a little bit of a shock if you're not expecting it. He does dish out quite a bit of damage. So start off in the default paradigm with the two synergists and the saboteur, and start getting some debuffs and buffs going. You'll want to debuff the uh, blade that he summons with D-Protect. You don't really need to cast D shell on it. Just deep protect it and then start chugging away at that. We want to get that destroyed as quickly as possible. So when you see that electrocute that the boss casts, you need to switch to your defensive paradigm immediately. You have about two seconds to switch or it's a wipe every time you see him cast the electric boost ability. Now, when this blade is destroyed, you don't actually get a lot of time uh, to damage the boss before the blade summoned again. So what I would recommend is doing it a little differently to how I've done it. You want to get the blade, the chain bonus built up really high on it, but don't actually stagger it. When it's built up high, you want to then build up the chain bonus on the boss until that's really high. That way you can finish the blade off quickly and then the boss will already be ready to be staggered uh, so you can do a lot of damage on him. You know, you see, because I didn't do that, he's already forging the next blade and I haven't even got him halfway up his chain bonus. Uh, so he's not even close to the stagger. So I'll just run through that again. The blade that he summoned, you want to get that so it's almost staggered, then get the boss so he's almost staggered, then finish the blade off, and then stagger the boss and do as much damage as he can so you can launch him while he's staggered with your commando. Let's do this. So you might want to go into Relentless Assault to, uh, uh, or Smart Bomb first to get deep protect on him, and then uh, go into Relentless Assault to build up his chain bonus with your ravages while he's staggered and use Null to launch him to stop him from forging another blade. When his chain bonus is high enough, switch to your uh, Cerberus Paragon, just three commandos, and finish him off quickly. Or two commandos and a ravager if you haven't used a sentinel monster as I am. So I don't execute this perfectly, in fact it's far from perfect. But you know I'm getting killed, so at this stage in the game it shows there is still some leeway. Just keep an eye on the chain bonuses of each of them, so you can see them dropping. Then you can just replenish them quickly with a commando. Now, I did lose my synergy spare, so I just need to resurrect that. Yeah, I was pretty much experimenting with how I did this fight. Uh, the idea was is that if I didn't kill him, I'd look at where I went wrong, what I could have done better, and then executed it a bit more uh, sufficiently the next time. But I did actually manage to kill him, which is why I'm not exactly 
performing exactly as I'm telling you that you should since I've had time to examine it afterwards. Now his chain bonus is almost dropping so I do need to keep that up. Again you need to use a commando to do that. And he's just about to be staggered so I should be able to get him launched before he look uh, Oh well the blades are already out but while he's staggered I need to do the damage to him. So that's pretty poor timing because I'm still taking damage now from his forged blade even though he himself has actually been launched. So hopefully I've explained it a little clearly so that you don't have the uh, kind of mess that I'm in at the minute. But uh, when he's staggered he does drop fairly significantly fast so... Somehow I do manage to salvage this encounter. And now I'm just going all out. And there we have it. He is defeated. You get 1200 crystal gem points for killing him. And you have a 5% chance of getting an awesome weapon for Noel or Sarah. And more importantly, as well as a fragment, you get an impressive 30,000 crystal gem points. Which is enough for another expansion already. Now you can do that now if you want, spend your crystal gem points, if you skip ahead to the end of this video you'll see where I spend them. But I'm going to go and kill the Ochu boss. Because he also relinquishes 30,000 crystal gem points. Which means we'll be able to do another expansion, so before the end of this video we'll be able to upgrade our crystal gem twice. So I'm just going to use his Cactuar uh, to return. And you can speak to this person to tell her you've killed that boss, although it's not urgent to do so. And then we need to go up the steps. You took care of the monster? Amazing! Now there's nothing to be afraid of. Either you two have excellent hunting skills, or your weapons are out of this world. So we'll go up these steps now and get the next quest. Has anyone told you of the savage monster lurking around this area? You'll see it on rainy days. That's when it comes out to feed. You see, that's why I never step foot outside when it's raining. Ah, I bet you could take that monster on. What do you say? You want to give it a shot? Really? It only comes out when it's raining. Keep an eye on the clouds. Try not to get killed. So as suggested, we're going to need to change the weather from cloudy to rainy. And, the on their side. and for that we need to lower the right hand lever. The boss himself is located in the western part of the map, so the, the marshlands, which you've probably already spent a fair bit of time in if you've been farming monster materials. That's where we're heading to next. I'm just going to set up a relentless assault paradigm since the boss does summon adds and will want to kill them as quickly as possible. Now you will need a chocobo obviously to get over to the marshes so the easiest one to jump on is just behind you at the uh, chocobo pen. I don't know why I didn't do that. So I'm going to need to find a chocobo and I think there is one just over this bridge. Yeah, I can see it. I still need to explore this area actually for the 100% side quest uh, exploration uh, thingy. Now, I think this boss is a little easier than the last boss. 
Although there is still a bit of tactic that you have to know what you're doing. So as I mentioned earlier, he does summon adds. You need to kill the adds quickly, but be careful because once you start attacking them, they run to the boss for assistance. If they do that, then uh, the boss can heal them back to full again and debuff the party, which is not a good thing. So before you start killing the adds, you want to get fully buffed as much as you can so that you can kill them quicker and then go all out on the adds. As you can see, they're trying to uh, plead with the boss, kill them quickly before they have time to finish that. And once they're dead, you want to start building up the uh, chain bonus of the boss. And you can do that with Sarah as your saboteur. I didn't actually get to debuff him though, I don't know whether that was just bad luck or or what. Oh, I messed that up. As you've probably guessed, he does like to summon his adds again, so try and get as much damage to him and his chain bonus as high as possible before he does that. And I think they're back now. I could be wrong. Well, they will be soon anyway. He does do some pretty na uh, nasty stuff, but uh, not that bad to be on. He's seed dispersed, so that means he's bringing his adds back out again. Again, before you try and take the adds down, do make sure you're buffed up. You need every little bit of extra damage you can get so that they don't uh, successfully plead with the boss. The best way to kill them is with your commandos, so I find aggression is a good paradigm for taking out those adds. Especially if you can have aggression uh, as two paradigms so that you can switch between them without having to wait for your ATBs to fill up a game, you should definitely be able to kill them then. Anyway, he goes down pretty quickly, you can see I've almost got him. I'm definitely going to kill him I think before the stagger anyway. And he's bringing his adds back out once more, but I'm just going to focus him down now since he's almost, almost been killed. And then I'll have to take care of the adds, they don't despawn once the boss is dead. And that's the boss finished with. So let's pop into aggression to finish these quickly. This boss also has a 5% chance of dropping an awesome weapon for Noel and Sarah. And make sure you keep them in if you don't want to use them because they are used as ingredients for the ultimate weapons later on. And yes, I think that's Sarah's weapon from this boss. And another 30,000 CP along with a fragment. So we definitely need to start thinking about spending some crystal gem points in a minute. But I am just going to equip this weapon. A nice upgrade for me. you want to go at farming the bosses that we've just killed for their weapons, for the weapon drops, then all you need to do is change the weather device back at the uh, Nomad camp and then return to the Historia Crux and then return back to the Archolite step and change the weather back to the conditions where the boss uh, favours and they will actually be back for you to kill again and you can do that as many times as you'd like. Let's spend some crystal gem points now, we've amassed a lot, we're going to get through two expansions. I'll do them one at a time though in case you're ahead of me or behind me or whatever and, and want to see how I would do them anyway. So we'll start with Sarah's first uh, expansion and we're going to level her role 
to level 95 so that's eight points into that and then we're going to put a couple of points into the synergist role that we recently learnt so taking that to level three and finally we're going to put 20 points into the medic role leveling that to 71 and I'm going to take the useful medic bonus boost number two and I'll come back to Sarah in a minute to spend her second expansions points but let's move on to Noel first of all and for Noel we're going to start by putting 14 points into his saboteur role so his saboteur we need to get to or want to get to level 29 And then once we finish with that, we're going to move on to the Synergist role to put four points into. So that's going to be taken up to level 73. And finally, we're going to put some points into his Medic role as well. 12 points to level 59. And I think we're going to take the Saboteur bonus boost, since we've been levelling that a little. And so back to Sarah. And we're going to need another 30,000 points to level Sarah. I've got over 40,000, so that's more than enough. And I'm going to put a single point into the Ravager roll, uh, followed by 16 points into the Synergist roll. So level 19 for the Synergist. And then we're going to take her Medic roll to level 84, so that's another 13 points into that. And I think we'll give her the accessory, uh, the accessory capacity plus 10 bonus. And finally we'll do Noel's uh, Crystarium expansion, his second one. And I'm going to put 8 points into his Saboteur role. We want to start boosting that up a little bit, it does come in handy and 10 points into his Synergist role. So level 37 for his Saboteur and then level 83 for his Synergist. And once we've done that, uh, take his Medic role to level 71. So that's another 12 points into that. And since it's level 83 now, I think it's about time we gave him a Synergist bonus boost. And there we have it, our characters are substantially more potent than they was before. Hey folks, well, I think that was quite a lucrative session. We've got some much stronger characters, uh, maybe a nice new weapon or two, and another three fragments. I've been Fuzzfinger, I'll see you next time.